My name is Daniel and my talk is about web accessibility for impaired users. And the goal, or my goal for this presentation is that uh, you get a sense to identify accessibility related problems on the websites you create and you get a clue how to fix them. So this is my goal. And um, I'm concentrating on two groups of um, users with uh, disabilities, which are visual disabilities and motor disabilities. And users with visual disabilities have low vision or are colorblind or are completely blind. And normally they access the internet with, with a keyboard in combination with a screen reader. Or if they just uh, don't see very well, they, they zoom in very much the web content. This is how the, what they do to get access to it. Uh, users with motor disabilities uh, normally cannot use their hands or have problems using their hands. For example, if they have a, an issue with their spine and they cannot, um, they can only use the, the head or move their head. They cannot use the hands at all or they have just shaky hands. So those are problems for those users. And they, most of the time, only use the keyboard to access uh, the web. And here are some common problems that um, relate to these restricted access to the websites. So one is uh, that people just want to zoom in to can better read the content. And um, it can happen that the layout totally breaks when you do that on some web pages. That's one problem. Another problem is that the, the screen readers, the tools blind people use, only have access to the DOM elements. So they can tell the user that, they, uh, that there is an input field or a button, but without a label or text for the button, they do not know what, what to put in the input field or what will happen when you, when you click on the button. So there's um, meaning is missing for those elements. Uh, another problem is that you can have uh, elements that are not accessible with the keyboard at all. So for example, imagine you have an image element and you attach an event handler for clicks. You will not be able to reach that with the keyboard tab key. Because normally only you can lose, um, can navigate to links or to form elements. But this image you will not reach. Um, high effort navigation. This is when you can imagine a normal website with a rich navigation on top and there is an input field in the main content area and the user can only uh, use the keyboard once to reach that field and he starts, when you load the page, you start at the first element which is normally a link in the navigation and then you just click through the whole navigation links to reach that input field which is a big effort for that user. Yeah. And another problem is dynamic content changes. So all the websites we built in the last weeks are very dynamic. So for example, you click a button here and over there uh, the text of an element changes. And without doing anything, the screen reader will not recognize those changes and the blind user will not know what's going on. So this is just some examples I picked out uh, which uh, users with disabilities have to access web content. Here are some solutions. One is called AREA. AREA stands for Access, Accessible Rich Internet Applications, yes. And this is just a, a specification which describes a way how you can make uh, regular web elements more accessible. In, prax in practice, this uh, looks like it. Uh, it looks like that, that you um, attach attributes to your elements. For example, you can have a input field and just add an attribute with a meaning for that. It tells you what to fill in. Or you have uh, a button and you just add a label for it. So it tells the users what happens when you click on that button. Um, and those attributes get picked up so they will not change your, your, the behavior of your website at all. But they get picked up from the screen reader and they will tell the user 
Uh, they provide that information to the user. Uh, very similar are HTML5 tags like footer or main or nav, which just tell, okay, that element holds the navigation or that element holds the footer, etc. Uh, you can use headings uh, to structure your website. And this also enables users with using screen readers to better navigate through the page. You can use anchors to create shortcuts for people using the keyboard and so on. And of course, you can use responsive design for people who want to zoom, that they have a still a nice layout, which is not broken. And I figured out that, uh, or I, um, I found something that you can disable this zooming functionality at all. And I think that's not a good thing, and you shouldn't, shouldn't use that. You can say, OK, I have implemented everything, and I know that the user is using a desktop monitor, and it should, like, it should look good on a desktop monitor, but still, people may not be able to read it. Um, uh, OK, I prepared a little demo that shows you um, an application. How do I leave the? Hmm? Uh, command shift F. Command. Okay, thank you. So I will show you. So this is the this is the guessing game I wrote during foundations, and it has some accessibility issues, and we are trying now to fix them. So what I will do is I will fire up a voiceover, which is the screen reader that comes uh, with the Mac. And I want you to, to carefully listen what, what it's reading out, when I'm, especially when I'm over the, the input field and when I'm over the buttons. So here, I can, I can control where it should go. So you can see, <laughs> I'm, I'm turning it off because it keeps on speaking. Uh, you can see it just says button, button, and uh, input field added text. So there's absolutely no meaning attached to it for the user. And he, the user doesn't know what it, what it uh, means when it clicks on the button, etc. But it's very easy to fix that. As I mentioned before, you can use area tags to, to put a meaning on those fields. And here I'm on the input field, and I will just use something like called area label. And we'll say. like your guess, okay? And I will add the same at the bottom with a different value. So here's that button. Just, what is it doing? Reset the game. And the other one It's just show the hint. Okay, save it. I fire it up again and navigate over those input fields and buttons to see what's reading. Okay, little typo. <laughs> <laughs> but you can guess. Uh, <laughs> You, you figure out how it works, right? Okay. Um, and not, so now the user knows, okay, here I put in the, the number and there is the button to, to make the guess. And if you, I will do it now. So we can see it. So you can see in this state the, the 
the game has no purpose for that user because he's putting in the numbers, but he has no idea what ha what's happening, right? Because one second. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's very easy to fix that. I think it's very important to make to make that one thing. And afterwards, I will not take any questions. <laughs> um, you just go to the to the element that's holding the dynamic content, and you put in something like area life. Sort of. I mean, you go back. Okay, so I guess you saw how easy it is to fix those problems. And now, in this state, the, the blind user can use your application. And before, it was not possible at all. Okay, that was pretty much it, what I wanted to cover. Um, I have some further readings. It's just two links. Where is it? There's ng area. You can, figure, you can later look it up, what it is. It's interesting. And so the first link is um, at the website, which is very good. So it's very, it has nice articles that covers the whole topic, accessibility for impaired users. And the second one uh, gives you a specific example of how to implement those uh, accessibility techniques. Thank you very much.